this is my very first talk at a conference and I'm very excited to be here. And I hope you don't mind if I just take a quick photo of you in this amazing auditorium. <laughs> Great, thanks. So, as we've heard many times today already, tumor evolution is, uh, tumor development is an evolutionary process. So a cell acquires a mutation that converts a growth advantage. It starts to proliferate and the descendants of the cell acquire even more mutations so that over time a heterogeneous tumor evolves. However, the life history isn't something that we can observe directly. So instead, what we usually have is just a single snapshot of the, to uh, of the tumor at the time of sampling. Nevertheless, the mutations encrypt the history of the tumor and therefore we should be able to reconstruct the tree of clonal uh, evolution. In the previous sessions, we've already heard a lot about methods that address this problem, most of which use bulk sequencing data. And we've also heard about the challenges there. So we're taking a different approach and instead use data derived from single cell sequencing. So our question is, how can we accurately infer a tree of clonal evolution from single nucleotide variants of single cells? And as a previous speaker pointed out, it seems this is, that this is a really simple task because we don't have the problem of bulk sequencing where we have to deconvolve the mixed signal. But single cell sequencing comes with its own challenges. And this is mainly um, the high noise levels of single cell sequencing data. And this includes both false positives and false negatives, as well as missing values. The false discovery rates of single cells are in the order of 10 to the power of minus five, which means that the number of false positives can easily outnumber the true negatives, uh, the true positives. And uh, allele dropout rates have been estimated to lie between eight and 43%, which is a very substantial amount. And in published data sets, um, yeah, published data sets have missing values sometimes of more than 50%. So even seemingly simple tasks, such as mapping cells to clones, becomes very challenging. And in addition to that, our single cell sample might not even represent all of the clones in the tumor, either because of sampling bias, because of the li limited number of cells we sequence, or because some of the cells or clones might have become extinct during evolution already. We're not the first to um, tackle these problems. There's been a study um, where people used classic phylogenetic methods. This one by Shu et al. They used um, neighbor joining. However, those classic methods don't necessarily account for the errors in the data set. A different approach was developed by Li et al. So here they um, manually, uh, they probabilistically adjusted the genotypes based on the false discovery rate and the allele dropout rate, and then um, manually reconstructed a tree based on, yeah, on the matrix of probabilities. And then there's bit phylogeny from my own group that uses a tree structured mixture model. And while mixture models are very valuable and widely used, they generally need a large sample size in order to converge. However, the current single cell data sets are rather small with usually less than 100 cells. So this is why we inferred, uh, we developed Onconem. Onconem is a nested effects model-based approach. It exploits the nested structure of the mutation patterns of related cells. And I'll start with the model definition. So Onconems consist of three parts. The first part are the clones, so the subpopulations. Every cell is assigned to a subpopulation, but subpopulations can also be completely empty. So those are, is to account for unobserved subpopulations. Then we have the tree that describes the relationship between subpopulations. And we have theta that describes the relationship between the data and the tree. And it, this is done by si assigning every variant site to the clone in which the mutation originated. 
Now, given this model, it's fairly straightforward to, to define a likelihood that describes how well a certain tree fits the observed genotypes. And I will explain the scoring method based on a little toy example. So here we have the observed genotypes, cells in rows, variants in columns, and we already have a, a hypothesis of the tree. Now what the tree actually tells us is how mutations were inherited during tumor evolution. And we can describe this with this matrix. So we, we expect to see all um, mutations in a clone that occurred in the clone itself, as well as the mutations in it, it inherited from its ancestors. Now, assuming that we know for every variant site in which clone the mutation originates, we can create the full matrix of expected genotypes. And then to assess the fit between the tree and the observed genotypes, we simply compare observed genotypes to the expected ones and score every entry based on some error probabilities for false positives and false negatives. Now, this assumes that we already know um, theta, but this is usually not the case. So instead, what we do um, is that we marginalize over it. So we know how to score a tree, but where does the tree actually come from? The tree space is huge, and therefore we developed a heuristic search algorithm. Um, yeah. So the input to this inference workflow are just the observed genotypes and some parameters. And then this process has three steps. The first one is an initial search that basically just gives us a draft of the tree, and it just considers tree where every cell corresponds to a single node. Um, yeah. So then we test for unobserved clones, and the final step is the clustering. So by default, the initial search starts with this star topology. So we have the normal at the top and attach all single cells to that. And we can score it, as I described before, based on some parameters. Um, the search algorithm is similar to a hill climbing algorithm. So, um, but there's a difference, and that is when we reach an optimum, we can also go back to previous lower scoring solutions to avoid getting trapped. So, um, yeah, from the star tree, we generate all the neighboring trees. We score all of them and pick the best one. And then we iterate that over and over again. In this um, example, we already found the best tree in the first step. So this is the input to the next step, testing for unobserved clones. So this is done by inserting unobserved, so empty nodes into branch points of the tree. Because only clones that sit at branch points can cre create additional mutation patterns in the data. So in this case, we insert a, um, an unobserved clone here. We rerun the initial search to account for local inaccuracies. And as you can see here, um, the cells one, two, and three share some mutations, even though they sit at different branches um, of the tree, which suggests that there actually is an unobserved node. And indeed, our um, likelihood improves. And we also make sure that the improvement of likelihood is big enough. So that's where this base factor threshold comes in. And we go to the next step, which is clustering. The clustering is an iterative procedure. So um, yeah, we just go along branches and step-by-step step cluster cells into clones along edges. So we know how to score trees. We know how to find trees. But where do the input parameters come from? Um, people have already um, estimated false discovery rates and LE dropout rates for single cell sequencing data. But it's important to know that they are very different from the parameters we use here because of pre-processing steps like consensus-based variant filtering and the binarization of the genotype data. So what we do here is we just run a grid search over various parameter combinations. 
So for these parameter combinations, we run the initial search and pick the parameters that yield the highest scoring solution. So it's basically a maximal likelihood approach. And in this simulation scenario, the ground truth parameter and the estimate are, are very close together. As you can see, the grid we use is rather coarse, but this is not a problem because our model is fairly robust to changes in the input parameters. And that's what we can see here. It's the same simulated data set, but now we've plotted the distance of the inferred trees to the ground truth and the V measure of the inferred tree to the ground truth. And the V measure is a measure of clustering performance. And what we can see is that, the inf yeah, that for a fairly large range of parameter combinations, we get solutions that are close to the ground truth and have similar um, clustering solutions. So next, we assessed uh, the parameter estimation accuracy of Onconem a, a bit more systematically. We um, did lots of different simulation, param param uh, sim simulation scenarios, varying all of the different simulation parameters, false negative rate, false positive rate, the number of mutation sites, the number of clones, the number of unobserved clones, cells, and the fraction of mil missing values. And for basically all of the yeah, and we estimated the false positive rate and the false negative rate. And for all of these scenarios, um, our estimates are very close to the ground truth parameters. Then we compared Onconem performance to competing methods. And we used both Onconem with parameter estimation and without parameter estimation and compared it to bit phylogeny and to baseline methods that combine different clustering methods with minimum spanning tree reconstruction. And again, we plot the distance and the mean measure where distance of zero is here at the top. Um, yeah, and what we see is, again, for basically all simulation scenarios, Onconem outperforms the other methods, and we don't really see any difference between the scenario with and without parameter estimation. So finally, we applied our method to a, a published data set. It's the one by Lee et al, where I showed you the heat map before. For this data set, we estimated a false negative rate of about 10%, which is um, in the range of values we expect. The, the estimated false positive rate is about 18%, which is fairly high, a bit higher than what I would have expected, but it's pretty consistent over all of the data sets we applied our method to. Um, this is the tree we ins uh, inferred here. We see the number of accumulated mutations. And what we see is that there are main, three main subpopulations. That's what Lee et al. also inferred by their um, manual reconstruction. But in addition to that, we also see smaller subpopulations, and they are fairly robust even if we vary the input parameters. So to summarize, Onconem is a method to infer clonal lineage trees from single nucleotide variants of single, um, single, sequencing, single cell sequencing data sets. It infers unobserved clones. It can accurately estimate error rates and it outperforms competing methods. And with this, I would like to thank my entire group, especially my supervisor, Florian Markovitz and Jeff McIntyre, who always there for advice, but unfortunately isn't on the um, photo, and the funding bodies, especially Cancer Research UK. Thank you. We have time for a couple of questions. Nobody? Well, we have a coffee break then. Uh, you can ask yeah. uh, any questions.